Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna talk about uh, Ashoka, okay? Um, so I did a video on that when I was two episodes in. I've now seen the entire series. I wanna share my thoughts with you guys. Uh, so for those of you who are, people that have been following my channel, you know that, you know, even though I, I cover a lot of gun stuff, I also cover a lot of sword fighting stuff. But I'll go. I'll talk about anything that I find is interesting and fun. I'll talk about cosmology. I'll talk about history, philosophy, whatever. So this is one of those things that is interesting and entertaining to me. Uh, I grew up with Star Wars. I, I watched all the original ones uh, in the theater. Um, so uh, uh, let's let's talk about this Ashoka uh, series that they that they put out. Okay. So the first of all, let me say this. I went into it with only one bias okay um my bias was that i better not say any woke stuff okay uh and at the same time i also went in there expecting to see woke stuff okay um so so there's that That's, but other than that i didn't go in there with the expectation that it was going to be good or bad i said hey let's just see what you know if this is any good and if i enjoy it or not so the first thing I want to talk about is the sword play, okay? Because uh, one of the central themes of these Star Wars uh, movies is, you know, fighting with lightsabers, the sword play, right? Um, so um, the th so so the thing that annoys me most about the Ahsoka about Ashoka and the Ahsoka series is the sword play, because as you guys that have been following my channel know. I basically fight competitively with swords, um, both steel blades uh, and these wooden simulators. Uh, so these guys over here, I pulled these out because um, these are colored like lightsabers. So I thought that would be kind of cool. Uh, but these are in fact weighed and balanced like, like real swords, okay? So this thing weighs about two and a half pounds. It has a balance point right about there. Vix acts as a pummel and that's what allows me to turn this over um, you know, like a real sword, okay? So, here's the thing I'm gonna say with, with real swords, okay? When you've got, with, with, with two swords, in particular, if you're fighting two swords, okay? The purpose of the two swords is so that while one sword is blocking, the other one is striking, okay? While one's blocking, the other one's striking. So, uh, the great thing about fighting two swords is your opponent never knows which sword is on offense and which sword is on defense, okay? Uh, either one can take that role at either time, okay? But that is the philosophy behind fighting with two swords. One sword's blocking while the other one is attacking, okay? What you will never do with two swords, okay, um, with an exception, is put them together, right? Because a lot of times I see a shoka like blocking with two swords uh, and... All that does is tie up your two weapons, okay? Once you establish that you are capable of blocking the opposing weapon with one sword, you're only going to block it with one sword while you simultaneously attack with the other. And ideally, it's like, you know, like you're blocking here and attacking at the same time. So it's going to look like this, you know, block, strike, okay? I assume that this cut's coming overhead. So if there's a cut coming overhead, as I see that cut coming in, I'm blocking it and then striking with the other sword. Now, the exception to this is I'm fighting an opponent um, with a mass weapon, right? Something that has a lot of power behind it, right? Uh, something like this that's going to deliver a lot of force that I cannot block with just one weapon. So if I'm fighting a mass weapon, like, like a poleaxe, okay? I then have to double up on my block. But once I establish that I need to double block because it's a mass weapon, I have to do that every time, right? I'm not gonna sometimes double block and then occasionally decide, hey, I no, I no longer need to double block. You know, I can only block with one sword, right? Because the whole reason why I was double blocking, okay, uh, is because I am not, it's not possible for me to block with just one of them and I have to double block, okay? So that's the only time to double block with two swords. If I, once I establish that I can block with just one sword, while one sword's blocking, the other one's attacking somewhere, okay? That's how that works. Now, in the Ahsoka series, um, you didn't have a guy, let's say like Darth Maul, that was using like a mass weapon, right? Because that presumably that could be a, a mass weapon 
um, what, what he's using, that double-ended spear. So you didn't have somebody using what you considered to be a, a mass weapon. Uh, the people that she was mostly fighting were using something similar to this bastard sword, two-handed sword, um, long sword, okay, um, which has a little bit more mass than this, right? So this is like two, two and a half pounds. This is like three pounds, maybe going up to three and a half pounds. So if I'm fighting a weapon like this, right, and this probably tends to be on the heavier end of these these type of swords and how he how heavy they are. I think it's like close to like three and a half pounds. But against a weapon like this, okay, I am capable of blocking it with one sword, not at the tip, but down here, right? I can cut into this, and as long as I catch it someplace between here and here, I'm capable of blocking a weapon like this. So for that reason, okay, again, there's no reason why I would ever want to double block that weapon. I want to take advantage of the fact that I have two weapons in my hands, block one, and then simultaneously attack with the other. Okay? Um, so that is like the most annoying thing that I saw in the Shoka. Um, because it, it, that, like, it, it defies all, like, logic to me, okay? I have an easier time believing that there's a little green Yoda someplace out there in the universe than believing that anybody that fights with two weapons is going to use them, you know, to double block a weapon that they know that they can block with just one sword or the other sword. Uh, and in the fight scenes, you will actually see her. Like sometimes she's double blocking and then sometimes she's like easily single blocking. And when she does single block, again, you don't see her block and then simultaneously attack because that would end the fight, right? Because that's what fighting two swords is all about. It's about blocking and attacking in the same action, right? In the same time so that you can immediately end the fight. Okay, so that's what you don't see her doing. Okay, so that is my sword fighting rant for Star Wars, okay? Um, so, putting the sword stuff aside, uh, let's go through some of the uh, characters, okay? So the first one I'm gonna talk about is the green general chick, okay? The one with the freaking horns that were going down her back. Uh, I think her, her name is Hera, okay? Um, and that's an annoying character, okay? And now, um, how on earth has this person ever become a general, okay? Um, like if, like if you're looking at, like we'll talk about Thrawn later on, you can see that, yeah, this guy is a general, right? This guy leads lots of people. He makes, like, decisions logically, you know, strategically. At no point do I see this general chick making any strategic, rational decisions. Uh, it just doesn't make sense that she would be a general, okay? Now, I do understand that Star Wars plays fast and loose, with the term general, okay, because for example, they made Han Solo a general, right? Okay, now with Han Solo, at least you know through the first Star Wars movie, we got a, a, you know they we at least developed that character a little bit. We saw him do some some stuff, right? Um, you know, he he was asked to lead certain things with this green general chick. They don't like. They don't show us that she's earned this role, right? Or even having, or now being in that role, displaying any generalmanship, right? Um, so, so it's like, okay, here's your participation trophy, right? You've got the right characteristics. You've got green skin, a big ass, and boobs. You get to be, and, and a vagina. You get to be a general, okay? That's what this general, this green general chick comes across as, okay? Um, now, I'm, I, it sort of makes me wonder if one of the underlying themes that Star Wars is pushing is that the Republic, okay, is just always going to be incompetent. That they're always going to pick the worst leaders. That, you know, if, now, if that's their underlying theme that they're shooting for, that they, that's the point that they're trying to uh, make to us, that the Republic... Is you know the reason why the uh, I guess the empire keeps coming back is because the republic is so incompetent, right? Uh, because they give away these participation general trophies. Yeah, that, you know if that's what they're going for, yes, they've they they have succeeded. They have made that point very well. Okay, um, so 
that's my thoughts on the on the green general chick. I mean, that kind of got under my skin. That's like, okay, why is this person even here? I mean, other than to say that this is the reason why the Republic keeps failing. Okay? Um, next character we're going to talk about, okay? Uh, the I forget her name. The, the Asian Mandalorian chick, right? And I say Asian Mandalorian because that's the thing that kind of visually stands out to me. She's clearly Asian. She's wearing Mandalorian armor. So the Asian Mandalorian chick. Um, yeah, that's basically the woke, you know, um, um, you know, character that they put in there. In addition to the Green General chick. So between these two characters here, it's like, it's like, you know, you guys suck. Okay, you could have come up with something a little bit better than that. Okay, um, so so these two things, like initially, at first, second episode in. I was like, yuck, between these two characters, okay? You're obviously pushing some type of agenda here. I don't like it. Uh, and I did say I was going to, you know, stay with it because I did see some other things that were interesting uh, in the series. But these two characters is like, this, these two characters right there have me rooting for the Empire, okay? Uh, those two characters right there. Now, let's talk about the Ashoka chick, okay? The Ashoka character. Um, now, obviously, they're presenting her... Kind of, sort of as a woman, but not really as a woman because she doesn't come across as very womanly. So uh, she's almost like uh, an asexual kind of character, w which is fine because she's an alien. So the difference here is, let's put it in, if, if you're looking at Ashoka as a female character, you don't need those other two female characters, those other, those other two weak female characters behind her, okay? Um... So that so that's the so that's the first thing. I think they actually weaken uh, the role of Ashoka, uh, you know, or Ashoka to some extent. Now the other thing with the uh, Ashoka character is the thing I kind of liked about her is that she didn't have to go around basically displaying her vagina that she's a woman. Okay, she just did her thing. Okay, so that's kind of one of the things like it's almost like a redeeming character. They didn't push the Ashoka, the woman Jedi. Okay, they didn't push that, so that kind of actually made me feel pretty good. It's like Ashoka, she's a Jedi. She fights with two swords. She sucks with two swords, but this is what she is. She's a Jedi with two swords that that sucks with in that art form, in that fighting form, and and here she is doing her thing. Okay, so I was actually pretty okay with the Ashoka character, the Balin character, right? The 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 dude, tall dude with the tall thick dude in black. I like that character. That guy was. I, I like the character, the, uh, a dude that like knew what he wanted, you know, had a go, was thinking clearly. Uh, again, this is, this would be, you know, now this guy was kind of like on his own team almost, right? He wasn't, he was on the Empire side, but at the same time, he, it seemed like he was just using the Empire to get to where he wanted to be to accomplish his own goals, okay? Um, so I, 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 re I really like that character. I hope they... Uh, they bring him back and, and, and do a lot more stuff with him. Uh, that's a character that I really like. The she character, that's the, the uh, Balin's uh, apprentice, right? Um, white hair, uh, uh, young girl with white hair. I like that character. I like the way they presented her. Uh, again, um, a, a, a young girl, uh, but not, not coming into this with, I'm woman, here's my vagina. Everybody part ways for me because I'm woman, you know. Um, like she came in and just did her job, right? She came in like you know she she you know she was underbailing. She did his thing, whatever he asked her to do. She did her fighting. Um, you know she knew her role, right? This character kind of, you know within this series knew the role that she was supposed to fulfill, and she did it well. So I like the she character. Uh, one of the things I was when I was watching the she character, like when you kind of look in her eyes, uh, she has like this crazy look, like like the bunny burner, the bunny boiler type of look. And I was kind of wondering, it's like, is she acting or is this how this actress is in real life? So it made me actually look her up and see some. And no, that's not the way she normally looked. So really good acting on portraying like a slightly psychopathic character. Um, but I did like the she character, and like I said, I did like the villain character. Uh, I hope they, they do a lot more with that in an upcoming series, okay? <laughs> the, the, uh, the other witch, I think her name was uh, the witch Morgan. Uh, I think that was her name. Um, she, I, I also liked that character. Uh, that was, she, I, I thought that that character was, again, not there to prove that she was a woman, 
there to fulfill a certain role on behalf of the Empire. Okay, so I, I like I like that character. Uh, I kind of I'm disappointed that they killed her off because I, I think I would have liked to have seen more of her um, in, in in the future series. So I did like the the the, uh, the that witch character Morgan. Uh, the three witches, right? I also like those characters. I like the way they supported Thrawn. Okay. Um, so again, you guys can see it's like it's not like I hate women. Okay. It, it's not you know it's not like uh, you know I don't like strong women that are competent and can fight. I, you know I, I like it. I just the character. You know it doesn't have to. It, it can be like here's a character who happens to be a, a, a woman who's also you know strong and a good fighter. And, you know it doesn't be like this with with the uh, with this Asian man Lauren chick, it seemed to me, and also with the green chick, it seemed to me it's like here's a character. The reason why they are supposedly good is because they are women. Okay, that's annoying. Okay, that's that's just irritating and, and annoying and just stupid. Okay, because that's not how the real world works. You know, um, even even in the make believe world, that's not realistic. Okay, um, the Thrawn character, uh, the, the the blue guy, blue face guy. Okay. I like that guy a lot. Um, again, this is a guy that a general, and you can see he's a general. You can see he's strategic thinking. Um, I, 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 I very much like the character. Um, you know, so that's some. I would definitely like to see another series that brings this guy back. Uh, you know, and it's like it actually. But here's the thing with Thrawn. They don't really give us any backstory. Like uh, uh, maybe they do, like in the com I, I don't look at the comics and stuff like that. I have just seen like the, the main movies that have you know that that that, that have come out and the and the, and, the, and the main TV series. Um, but if you watch like the animated or, or Star Wars or the or the, or the comic book Star Wars, you might know more about this guy. I don't. So for me, it's like okay, so where did this guy come from? Apparently, he was well known already. Already, he had played some role. Um, I would have liked to have known a little bit more about that. Um, but that's something that they can actually come back to because they did a pretty good job of convincing me that this guy is competent. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, you know, he's got an agenda and it's almost like, you know, wait, wait a second. What, why do, why does the empire even need an emperor? You know, uh, this guy seems like he's pretty good on his own. <laughs> They're very competent. So I, I like the role of Thrawn. I like Thrawn. Okay, again, I don't know, I don't know where he came from. I don't know what his backstory is. Uh, but unlike the green general chick, he convinced me very quickly that he deserves to be a general. Okay. Um, so uh, overall, let's talk about the, what this series has done a great job of convincing me is that the Repu republic is incompetent. Okay. Um, it seems to me it's like they're at, they are destined to fail, okay, because they keep coming up with these weak, stupid characters that make bad decisions. That, now, that's the other thing that, that, that kind of, that, that I guess it, it can kind of like play into the storyline that, hey, the reason why the Republic keeps failing is because they keep making bad decisions. And a, a bad decision was, for example, when this um, Asian Mandalorian chick, went back went through this wormhole right to go to um you know uh, you know to, to go to another galaxy to try and rescue this guy ezra right that and again it really didn't develop that character too much or you know he's just like you know maybe they'll do it in the future series but, but basically they went back to get him but ashoka right had told her like not to do that right it was more important not to let an entire army come through Right into this galaxy, rather than go to the other galaxy to go rescue this one person, right? Because that was kind of like the trade-off, right? And it seems like Shoka was aware of that. And if she went back to rescue this one person, all right, who was a Jedi, right, an entire army would come through. Okay, um, so 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 Ashoka again showing some competence, told her. Don't let this happen, right? Don't make a decision. Don't let this happen. The Asian man, Lurian chick, did let this happen, which was a bad decision. And the annoying thing is here that later on, like in the last, ep last episode, it seems like Ashoka was like somewhat forgiving or understanding or even telling her that she did the right thing. Clearly, she did not do the right thing, okay? Um, you know, 
clearly that was that's the type of error that keeps causing this republic to fail. Okay, uh, so again, if that is the underlying theme that they're going to, you know, keep bringing back that the republic is idiotic and keeps failing because they make bad decisions, and here's those bad decisions on display. Yes, they they've illustrated that really well. Okay, um, but overall. I did find it entertaining. Uh, if they do a, uh, a another series, right, a, a season two, I, I'll watch that. Uh, again, as long as they keep it family friendly, right? As long as they keep it to a level where I can have my kids, you know, watch it in the living room, right? Uh, and not like do what Star Trek did with the Discovery. So let me know what you guys think. Um, drop some comments below. Uh, and again, this is, I like discussing other things besides the stuff I normally talk about on this channel because it brings other people in, right? It brings other people in. They come here, they get my ideas on this, and then maybe they'll watch a couple of other videos and pick up a few more hobbies, okay? So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.